welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, a rather windswept Claire Ridgeway. Uh, come outside because it's so hot in the house, but um, the breeze has kind of got up, so yeah, you're just going to have my hair flying past my, my face and also my notes are probably going to go flying all over the place. But uh, we do like these challenges when we're bringing Tudor history to life. On this day in Tudor history, I'm going to take you back to 1512 here, the 10th of August 1512, which of course is in the uh, the early reign of that iconic king, King Henry VIII. And on this day, the Battle of Saint Matthieu um, took place. Now, this was a naval battle in the War of the League of Cambrai and it took place between, it was a battle between the English fleet, the English Navy, and the Franco-Breton fleet. Um, it took place off the coast of Brest, uh, Brest being in France. England at the time had an alliance with both Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. So uh, against uh, Franco-Breton, France and Brittany. Now, as the Mary Rose Museum points out on its excellent website, and I would highly recommend going and visiting the Mary Rose website and actually visiting the Mary Rose Museum if you ever get the chance to go to Portsmouth in England. As they point out on their website, this battle in 1512, on this day in 1512, was the Mary Rose's first battle and she was actually chosen as the English fleet's flagship in this battle. So that's a really momentous occasion for her. She was chosen by Sir Edward Howard, who was Admiral of the English fleet. Now Howard uh, was moored with the English fleet at Portsmouth, Portsmouth being on the south coast of England, and he'd heard news that the French fleet, the French Navy, had gathered at Brest, and so he set off from Portsmouth with the English fleet to meet them. The two fleets, the, the Franco-Breton and the English fleet, met in Bertone Bay near Brest on the 10th of August, and that's when the battle began as these two fleets met each other. Now, the English fleet on that day had 25 ships and the French fleet had 21. So the French were slightly outnumbered, but not by much. Um, I'm going to read to you a quote from the Mary Rose Museum, which explains things. It was the Mary Rose that, according to records, drew first blood when she shot off the main mast of the French flagship Grande Louise, commanded by Admiral René de Clermont. Although the Grand Louise was able to escape with the loss of 300 men, this marked the first time in the history of naval warfare that ships with lidded gun ports had engaged one another. So another you know, way that this occasion was momentous, the first time that ships with lidded gun ports had engaged in battle together. Now the battle lasted for quite a few hours, but it was the English fleet that was victorious at the end of the battle. However, the English fleet lost its largest ship, uh, this ship being the Regent. The Regent sadly sank, as did uh, one of the French fleet, the Marie La Cordelière. Uh, so both those ships were lost in the battle. They'd been firing at each other at very close range, close quarters, when a fire broke out uh, on board La Cordelière um, and it soon reached the ship's powder magazines. And when that happened, both ships, the French one and the English one, because they were so close together, they were both blown up because of the fire reaching the gunpowder. Sadly, both captains were killed along with um, around 1,500 men, so a real loss of life there. Those killed included uh, Sir Thomas Nivett and Sir John Carew, who had both been given, they'd been given joint command of the regent. 
Now, my favourite chronicler, well, I like Charles Risley and I like Edward Hall, but I think I prefer Edward Hall because he gives uh, far more details in his chronicle. Uh, he gives um, an account. He writes, But for all that the Englishmen entered the carrick, which, seeing a varlet gunner being desperate, put fire in the gunpowder, as others say, and set the whole ship of fire, the flame whereof set fire in the regent. And so these two noble ships, which were so grappled together that they could not part, were consumed by fire. The captain of this carrack was Pierce Morgan, and with him 900 men slain and died, and with Sir Thomas Nivett and Sir John Carew were 700 men drowned and burned, and that night all the Englishmen lay in Bertone Bay, for the French fleet was sparkled, as you have heard. So he's actually putting it at 1,600 men there, so it's around 1,500, 1,600 uh, that died as a result of those two ships blowing up. Cardinal Thomas Wolsey wrote of the battle as well in a letter to Richard Fox, who was Bishop of Winchester. Wolsey wrote, gives an account of a severe sea fight near Brest on Tuesday fortnight, where the regent captured the great Carrick of Brest, but both fouling were burnt and most part of the crew in them. Sir Thomas Nivett and Sir John Carew slain, begs he will keep the news secret. P.S. The French fleet has fled to Brest. Sir Edward, that's Sir Edward Howard, has vowed that he will never see the king in the face till he hath revenged the death of the noble and valiant knight, Sir Thomas Nivett. And according to the chronicler Edward Hall, when Henry VIII heard of the loss of the English ship, the Regent, he ordered um, another ship to be made as soon as possible, and this was the Henry Grace de Dieu, the Henry Grace of God, to replace the Regent that was lost. So there you go, on this day in Tudor history, a battle at sea. The English were victorious, but of course uh, a lot of men were killed that day, including quite prominent uh, English uh, naval commanders. So, so a victorious day, but a very sad day as well for the English fleet. So yes, I'm rather uh, windswept now, but it is so nice to have some breeze. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's uh, talk. Um, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking around about there. And it is great if you can subscribe because um, the more subscriptions I get, the more YouTube sort of highlights these videos uh, so that other people will stumble across them and enjoy these Tudor tidbits. You can also hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And please also do consider giving this video a like. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.